taking food? You don't have to take food. So you can always try food. So if Kaya's scared of the garage, she's been in here several times before. Um, he's scared of the garage door, so he doesn't love being in here because he knows that door could go at any minute. But I thought I would try him on treadmill and show you guys how uh, dogs do on treadmill. It's not ideal because he's kind of scared of this place because of the garage door, but uh, so it doesn't exactly make for a positive experience with the treadmill, but this is where the treadmill's at, so we're gonna do our best. I am just using this kibble, usually he takes it. He's not right now, I could try treats if I wanted to, but that's okay, he's pretty strong, strong dog, and so we'll see if we can just work him through it. So first thing I do, break, is just on and off the treadmill a few times so you can feel what it feels like. Good. Boy, and I do use prong collar a lot of times for the dogs. Some dogs that I think are dogs that are bigger, break that I think are going to be a lot of trouble. I'll use prong collar and a slip leash or dog and a dog collar. What you doing? Come on, let's go. The prong collar will really help him from thinking that um, he can hop off. Break. Good job. So he's jumped on it a few times. So break, place. He knows where that is. That's usually where he hangs out. Down. Good. So I want him to just uh, hear it turn on. So when, when he's not on it for the first time, to just get used to it and not be as startled by it. I don't want it. You can see how his back is facing the treadmill. I don't want that because um, it'll make him more nervous because it's gonna happen behind him. So I just want him facing the treadmill when I turn it on. Break. Come on, bud. Don't, don't hop on it yet. Here, there you go. So you've got no fear of jumping on it because it hasn't been turned on yet. What's that? This is also a good time to use food if your puppy, if your dog will take it. Not puppy, if your dog will take it. Yeah. What do you think about that? It's interesting, huh? So just different noises. Make sure your dog doesn't bucket that first. His, he's, he can be nervous and fearful, but his curiosity tends to outweigh other stuff. So. Good. He hopped right on without any uh, hesitation, so that's good. Break. Now I'm going to kind of do this quickly. I'm going to turn it low on one and then kind of turn it down a little bit from there um, as soon as I get him on it. I have seen some very successful videos where they turn it on and then have the dog hop on with it already on. Uh, yeah, I think just you could try a few different things depending on what works best for the dog. Because um, it is, you, you have to imagine, I don't like, um, I don't like doing that because I think that the movement, as soon as they get on, they don't get a chance to kind of get their bearings. However, it's also startling to be still and then all of a sudden it be moving. So I can see both sides of it, just so you guys know, just options you can play with. All right, let's go, good.
I, I felt him escalating for a second, and then he just kind of committed. I was really good at it. You want to try to keep your dog on it until they get to be like this, a little bit more relaxed, before you turn it off. And I'm just doing pressure on, pressure off, on, off. You can't hold pressure. That's irritating to the dogs. Good. Now, if he had been trying to go this way, I would have blocked, and my guidance would have been back this way. Okay? If he had been trying to go forward, um, my guidance would have been back. You know, you, got, you want to counteract wherever uh, your dog is trying to flee. I kind of want to mention one thing real quick um, when I was talking about, you know, the direction is so important. However, if he's just trying to bolt, it's kind of like when you're driving a car and something happens, you overcompensate in one direction, the car veers off into the ditch instead of hitting the car, if that makes sense. So you always want to try when you're driving not to overcorrect. So if the dog is trying to flee off of a side, I don't go directly to the opposite side. That's likely to be an overcorrection. And then they would hop back on and take a step onto the plastic that's not moving. Get up here, what are you doing? That's not moving. Um, so it is kind of a balance. You just have to play. You just have to play around with what your natural instincts are and play around with your dog. I'm going to kind of move where I'm at. See if it helps it. Break. What did you think of that? That was a good job. He's a little stiff. 
You all right, bud? Yeah. What'd you think of that, huh? What'd you think? Whew, I know that's tough. Now let's see if he'll get back on again without any issues. Come here, bud. Oh, very nice. Oh, but now he's a little guarded, though. You, you see that head, like, squatting down? That is good. Break. Let's go. Come on. So now I'm getting a little resistance. Not bad, though. Ooh, it is. Yeah, now I'm getting a little bit more resistance. Good job, buddy. Good boy. Break. Let's go. Again, that's not a technique that I love, but um, but I do. I have seen some other trainers do it successfully, so why not? Break. Yeah, good boy. Come on. All right, here we go. Let's go. Yeah, there you go. Good job. Break. Good boy. for you and obviously with dogs that are terrified we have to take many many more steps in order to do this successfully um, but I, I figured Papaya would be scared but I figured he'd get over it and he did this is really good so you see how unsure he, he is if you can't see him on camera he's very very stiff his eyes are big and he's you know just doing little darts back and forth unsure, right? So, oh, and Yanni. Oh, big Yanni. <laughs> That's the mental word. So, um, basically, imagine if you did this every day for a week, or two weeks, for 15, 20 minutes tops, even 10 minutes. I don't care if you got five minutes. It's so useful. Imagine how he'll be on day six or seven. He'll just be like, oh, this again? Okay. You know? So, anyway. Especially with some of you quarantined at home, hopefully, if you have one of these, that'll be helpful. I should say my German Shepherd, Dakota, um, she's so long body. I have to hook her up here and here, a little bit uh, more snug, like to the front than normal, because her feet will go off the back if I don't, and that's really bad for their feet. This is a human one, it's not designed for dogs. The dog ones are longer. So if you have a really long bodied um, dog, like a German Shepherd, you gotta take that into account um, and pay attention to that. So, perfect for Pekai size. Yeah, good boy. Good job, buddy. Yeah, break, break. <laughs> good boy, that was good. 